الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين In the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh May the peace, mercy, blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon each and every one of you, my brothers and sisters. Every single second, every single moment in the month of Ramadan is the opportunity for all of us. Every single second is the opportunity for us to connect ourselves with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm not talking about the hour, week, or the days, or the nights. Every single second is very important. It can help us to purify our sins, my brothers and sisters. It will help us to be written among the one who will enter into the paradise. So value every single hour, value every single moment, value every single second of the month of Ramadan. Even if it is by saying, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, don't waste it. Don't waste my brothers and sisters because sometimes I can't understand, can't digest that even in the month of Ramadan people are wasting their times. They are wasting their times on the social media by watching haram, by listening haram, by talking haram, by attending the gatherings of the haram. It is very unfortunate, believe me. Is a once in a year this Ramadan comes for what? To purify us. To once again to regain that relationship that we lost or that we forget, that we forgot. To rebuild that relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is a once in a year my brother and sisters. So make sure that you take full advantage of this. I'm telling you. You don't have any time for others. You don't have any time for this and that. Just focus on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just focus on the relationship between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fulfill the rights of Allah. Fulfill the rights of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my brother and sister. It is never too late, I am telling you. It is never too late to change yourself. To return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter how many sins you have committed. Once you connect yourself, once you return to Allah with a sincere heart, with a sincere words, he is there to welcome you. He is there to purify you. He is there to forgive you. It is out of the mercy of Allah, my brothers and sisters, that Allah don't look at our past. Allah don't look at our past. What matters in the sight of Allah is our present. If our present is good, if our, if our present is filled with the God-fearing and God-consciousness, Allah will wipe out all the sins of our past. It is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah only counts the present, not the past. Remember this. So forget about your past. Forget about the 40 years of your life, 60 years of your life. If you lived it in a sin, if you lived in a filth, if you lived it by doing the things which are against the, the commands of Allah or living your life by you know, transgressing the sacred limits of Allah, forget about it. You have this opportunity. I'm telling you, I have this opportunity. To ask Allah in a very humble way, you know, in a very humble way, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I did things which I should not do, which, are, which I should have not done. I did transgress your limits, Ya Allah. I came in the, in the, in the, in the traps of the shaitan. I, I fall in the deception of the shaitan, Ya Allah. I'm your weak servant. I'm not perfect. I'm not strong, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, please forgive me. Ya Allah, have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me, on my, upon my family members, upon my loved ones, in, on the entire Muslim Ummah, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Beg Allah, my brother and my sisters. Beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no better time to beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the month of Ramadan. You know, in the month of Ramadan, you get three opportunities to get rid from your sins, to be forgiven. Three opportunities. One opportunity, Man Sama Ramadan, Iman and Wahtisaba. One opportunity to get rid from all your forgiveness is through the fasting. Three, three opportunities Allah is giving you. One is through fasting that whoever fast during the month of Ramadan with Iman. What is Iman? Iman means that it is important for me to fast. It is necessary upon me. It is, it is compulsory upon me to fast for the sake of Allah throughout the month of Ramadan. I believe in Allah. 
And I believe in this teaching of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what is Iman. And then, ihtisaban. What is ihtisab? Ihtisab means, they look on fasting this only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'm expecting the reward of this fasting from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is ihtisab. You are expecting something from Allah. So don't you think that when you expect something from Allah, Allah will give you? Allah will give you always, my brothers and sisters. So those who fast with iman and with ihtisab, Allah will forgive all of their sins, whatever the sins that they have committed in their life, knowingly and unknowingly. This is the first opportunity. Second opportunity, man qama Ramadan. Whoever established the salat during the nights or during the days of the month of Ramadan, with iman and with ihtisab, once again, his sins will be forgiven, her sins will be forgiven. Third opportunity, man qama laylatul qadr. Whoever established the prayer remembers Allah during the nights of the Laylatul Qadr. During the night of the Laylatul Qadr, his sins will be forgiven, her sins will be forgiven. Subhanallah. This is the best experience for us, the Ramadan. And you know, Hajj is also similar. The philosophy of the Hajj, if you look at it, the philosophy of the Hajj or the purpose of the Hajj and the purpose and the philosophy of the fasting is the same. What is for Hajj? Hajj is to purify our sins. When we go and perform the Hajj and return back, we are fresh, we are like newborn baby, isn't it? We are like newborn baby. There is a lifetime opportunity, but that's not every year. Ramadan is every year. And even sometime for some people, sometimes because of they can't afford to perform the Hajj, they probably they will not be able to perform the Hajj throughout their life. But Alhamdulillah, Allah knew it. So that is why He has given us the Ramadan every year. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Every year this Ramadan comes. Just to purify the sins of 11 months, my brothers and sisters. This, this Ramadan, I'm telling you. So, so, Hajj is to purify ourselves from the sins. And Ramadan is also to purify our sins. Allahu Akbar. So, lucky are the people, those who utilize this opportunity. So, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among the special ones, to make us among the chosen ones. You know, every single night in the month of Ramadan, Allah frees the soul from the hellfire. Allah frees them. Allah gives them the freedom. Allah grants them the salvation from the hellfire every single night during the month of Ramadan. What does it mean? It means that the souls, the people, those who were destined to enter into the hellfire, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives them throughout the month of Ramadan. Subhanahu, out of His mercy. Because they decide to change themselves. They decide to return to Allah. They decide to ask Allah's forgiveness. So Allah writes down their name to enter into the paradise, subhanAllah, instead of the hellfire. Don't you want your name to be written among those chosen ones? Among the people whose souls are being freed and from the, from the hellfire? Don't you want this, my brothers and sisters? Tell me yes or no. Raise your hands. How many of you want this? I want this. Don't you want this? Angels are looking at you. Allah is looking at you. So what do you have to do for that? Tell me what you have to do. Fast. With ikhlas, with sincerity. While you are fasting, fasting is not only the fast of stomach and the belly and this and that. Fasting of your gaze as well. Fasting of your ears as well. Fasting of every single limb of your body. And then you have to continue throughout your life, inshallah. Not only in the month of Ramadan. Throughout your life, develop your special relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Stop making the excuses that next year I will change my life. When I will perform the hajj, then I will change my life. When you will perform the hajj, you will make higher change. Make it changes now, my brothers and sisters. Today, this year, inshallah, let this Ramadan be the best Ramadan of your life. Whatever the shortcomings you have, Whatever the mistakes that you are ma making, whatever the actions you are struggling to, to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, build it throughout the Ramadan. Even if it is for the salat, or for the zakat, for the fasting, whatever it is. Make your relationship with that particular action that you are struggling with stronger in the Ramadan and then continue it after Ramadan, inshallah. So change your life, my brothers and sisters. If you will not change it now, so when? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is even asking in the Quran, Alam ya'nil amanu. That hasn't the time come? Hasn't the time come for the people of Iman, for the people of Iman, for the people of faith to surrender themselves to the remembrance of Allah? 
to soften their hearts for the remembrance of Allah? Hasn't the time come that they should direct their hearts towards the remembrance of Allah? Don't you think the time has come, my brothers and sisters? Stop making the excuses, this and that, because of this I can't do, because of that I can't do. Or you see, last year or the year before, many people were among us, but they no more among us. So when you will change, and believe me, next year, we are sitting here, we are sitting here, next year, few of us will be missing from this gathering. Don't think about the elderly people, huh? it can be young one as well. Because most of the time think that elderly people will expire before us. No, it can be you, anybody. Death does not distinguish if you are young or old or poor or rich or pious or sinful. No, it will come. When the time is written, it will come. At the allotted time. So few of us, may Allah, we ask Allah to grant all of us long life. But it is the reality. Kullu nafsin zaikatul maut. One or five or ten of us will be missing from this gathering. It can be me, it can be you. So why not to make the last Ramadan of our life the best Ramadan? Wow. Eh? How on earth do you know that you have ten more Ramadan of your life? Nobody has this authority. Probably this is my last Ramadan. So I want to make sure that when I being buried in the grave, I go with the best Ramadan of my life. Best Ravi of my life, best fasting of my life, best Iftar and best Sari of my life, inshallah. So that that can be saman, that can be the luggage of my salvation in the life of the hereafter. Yes, my brother, already 10 days gone. 10 days gone. First Ashra is gone. Ashra of the mercy is gone. Only 20 days, 20 nights is remaining. So you still have time, inshallah, to build that relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to remember Him. You know, if in the month of Ramadan, if we can control our appetite, if we can control ourselves from the drinks and from the foods so surely we can control ourselves from the minor sins Anji, professor sahab aji sahab tell me you know what is important tell me backbiting is important for us to survive or drinking the water for us to important for us to survive tell me na water water is life water is hayat we can't survive. Human being can't survive without the water. So if we can survive for 13 to 14 hours without water, so don't you think we can survive without backbiting as well? Don't you think we can survive without lying, without deceiving, without hurting the people, without making the fun of the people? Don't you think that? We can survive without protecting our guests? You understanding or not, my brothers and sisters? Without committing the sins from our gaze, gaze and with, from our hands. So this Ramadan is to train ourselves basically. And let this Ramadan be the training session for you inshallah. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us and to forgive us and to have mercy upon all of us. And uh, alhamdulillah, build your relationship in the month of Ramadan with the Quran inshallah. Listen the Quran, recite the Quran. When you come in the masjid, offer the salat, very good, but spend some time at your home as well. When you and by yourself, all alone, and Allah is looking at you, Allah is watching at you, inshallah. During the month of Ramadan, ask Allah's forgiveness. Follow the protocols, please wear your mask. Social distancing is very important. We have to follow the law. Inshallah, this is very important. Be the smart and be the wise one. When you will follow, you will be making the easy uh, matter for us, inshallah. Because a lot of brothers, they make a lot of efforts to make the instructions, to print the instructions, to post the instructions, to make sure everything is well, uh, go well. So please take those guidelines serious, my brothers and sisters. And when you are leaving the masjid, leave with peace, inshallah. Leave with, with good heart, with good mind. Make sure that your, your heart is clean, your heart is neat. When you are bowing in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make sure that you are prostrating with a good heart, with a clean heart. Then and there your, your salat will be accepted, your fasting will be accepted. Remove all the animosity, all the jealousy. If you really want Allah to forgive you, my brothers and sisters, for that you need to clean your heart. Allah don't forgive the heart which has the, which has the shahna, which has that animosity, which has that jealousy, which has that who is consumed with the jealousy. Allah don't forgive that individual unless he asks Allah's forgiveness.
and uh, unless he resumes his affair with the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So spread the salam, afshu salama bainakum, greet one another inshallah, greet one another with, with good intention, with smile, with, with good expression inshallah, because sometimes we don't, we don't practice the sunnah of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We don't practice it, we only greet whom we know and we don't greet whom we don't know. Greet one another brother and sisters, be the better one. If others are not greeting you, you greet, you will get more reward inshallah. Anybody you see, any Muslim anywhere in any part of the country, in any part of the world, just say assalamu alaikum. How many, many, many minutes it will take you to utter assalamu alaikum? Not even few seconds my brother, few seconds. And you will get immense reward, immense blessings. I don't know why we don't greet one another. What is the problem with us? When Nabi Karim Sallallahu came in Medina, the very first instruction was what? Afshu Salam. Spread the Salam between one another. The very first instruction. Greet one another with the best form of the greeting. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mulana Mushtaq Musulmani rahimahullah. May Allah grant him another for those who used to mention that greeting is the dua. Greeting is the supplication. Greeting is the prayer. So why are you depriving others from, the, from their dua? And when you are not greeting others, it means that you are also depriving yourself from their dua, from their prayer. Because when you will greet then and there, that person will greet you back. So you are giving him the dua and he is giving you back the dua, inshallah. So greet, inshallah, Aziz. Put the smile on your face as well. I don't know. When we go all over in the business places for our work, for our jobs, we say good morning, good morning, good night, good evening, good afternoon. But the minute we come in the masjid, our faces started to swell. Or we start to frown like somebody has eaten your food or somebody has snatched your vehicle or something like that. I don't know what, what happens to us. All of a sudden, the minute we see a Muslim brother, the minute we see somebody wearing a jubba, I notice this sometime. I go all over and see brother is there, okay. I wait, let him say the salam. You know, sometimes I just play with myself. And if that person is not saying, then I say salam. But you should be the first one to say the salam. Don't hesitate. But when we see a, a, a disbelieving people from people from the another faith, we're good with them. We're laughing, we're giggling. Good morning, good evening. How are you? This and that. Morning, morning, morning. But the minute Muslim brother, I don't know what start to bite us. So, salam is something which will remove the misunderstanding, which will remove the misconceptions, inshallah. Sometimes I know people don't greet because they hesitate or I don't know if he will reply, but greet, inshallah, greet for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, make this Ramadan the best Ramadan of your life. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. My name is Safiya Khan and today I will be reading you the story of Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam. The story, however, is in two parts, so this is the first part. One beautiful morning, Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam, son of the Prophet Yaqub alayhi salam, awoke from his sleep, delighted by a pleasant dream he'd had. Filled with excitement, he ran to his father and related it. Oh, my father, verily, I saw, in a dream, eleven stars and the sun and the moon. I saw them prostrating themselves to me. Quran chapter 12 verse 4. His father's face lit up. He foresaw that Prophet Yusuf salam, would be one through whom the prophecy of his grandfather, Prophet Ibrahim salam, would be fulfilled. In that his offspring would keep the light of the Prophet Ibrahim salam's house alive and spread Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's message to mankind. Therefore, it is narrated that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was asked, Who is the most honorable amongst the people? He replied, The most God-fearing. The most honorable person is Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's prophet, the son of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's prophet, the son of the faithful friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Prophet Ibrahim that is. Narrated by Sahih al-Bukhari. However, the father was well aware of the jealousy of Prophet Yusuf salam's brothers, so he warned him against telling his dream to his brothers. O oh my son, relate not your vision to your brothers, lest they arrange a plot against you. Verily, Satan is to man an open enemy. Thus will your Lord choose you and teach you the interpretation of dreams and other things, 
and perfect his favor on you and on the offspring of Yaqub alayhi salam, as he perfected it on your fathers, Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam and Ishaq alayhi salam aforetime. Verily, your Lord is all-knowing, all-wise. Quran chapter 12 verses 5 to 6. Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam heeded his father's warning. He did not tell his brothers what he had seen. It is well known that they hated him so much that it was difficult for him to feel secure telling them what was in his heart and in his dreams. Now let's talk about the physical description of Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam. Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam was 18 years old, very handsome and robust with a gentle temperament. He was respectful, kind and considerate. His brother Binyamin, or Benjamin, was equally pleasant. Both were from one mother. Because of their refined qualities, the father loved the two more than his other children and would not let them out of his sight. To protect them, he kept them busy with work in the house garden. Prophet Yusuf salam's brothers plotted against him. They said, truly, Yusuf and his brother Benjamin are more loved by our father than we, but we are a strong group. Really, our father is in plain error. Let's kill him or cast him out. One from among them said, Kill not Yusuf, but if you must do something, throw him down to the bottom of a well. He will be picked up by some caravan of travelers. Quran chapter 12, verses 8 to 10. Indeed, Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam kept his father's order and did not tell his brothers about his vision. In spite of this, his brothers sat down to conspire against them. One of, him, one of them said, Why does our father love Yusuf more than us? Another answered, perhaps because of his beauty. A third said, Yusuf and his brother occupied our father's heart. The first complained, our father has gone all astray. One of them suggested a solution to the matter, to kill Yusuf alayhi salam. Where should we kill him? We should banish him away from these grounds. We will send him to a distant land. Why should we not kill him and have the rest so that the favor of your father may be given to us alone? However, Yahud, the eldest and most intelligent among them, said, There is no need to kill him when all you want is to get rid of him. Look here, let us throw him into a well and he will be picked up by a passing caravan. They will take him with them to a distant land. He will disappear from our father's sight and our purpose will be served with his exile. Then after that, we shall repent for our crime and become good people once again. The discussion continued on the idea of dropping Prophet Yusuf salam, into a well, as it was seen as the safest solution. The plan to kill him was dropped. Instead, they approved the kidnap into a distant land. It was the cleverest of ideas. That concludes the story of the evil plot to get rid of Prophet Yusuf salam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Mm -hmm.